today, I'm excited to be talking to Mr. Oswald Moyo. We're discussing his research title, research article titled An Indigenous African Knowledge Framework in Science Communication, which we published on our blog on September 2023. It's a great article. I'll link to it in the description box below about indigenous knowledge frameworks. And we're lucky that Mr. Moyo is here to tell us more about it. So Hi there, Mr. Moyo. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Would you like to start by introducing yourself a little more to our, for our viewers and also summarizing the study in a few words? Thank, thank you very much uh, for hosting me today. Uh, I'm in Zimbabwe, in Southern Africa, for those who do not know. But my name is Oswell Moyo. Uh, I, I, I was a past research fellow at Mitchell State University, which is, is in Zimbabwe. Uh, I've got a Master's of uh, Philosophy in Media and Society Studies plus also a Bachelor of Science, Honours Degree, Journalism and Media Studies. My research interest lies in uh, media representation, indigenous knowledge system, uh, climate change communication, healthy communication, and digital media. These are, those are my research uh, interests. Uh, my past research work, uh, it was situated within uh, a, a project which was funded by the government of Zimbabwe, which was uh, commercialization and beneficiation of indigenous fruits and herbs, which involved uh, uh, multidisciplinary uh, departments and uh, faculties. I think it, it started in 2020 up to uh, 20. It, 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 it's a, it was a for masters and for PhD. Uh, so all in all, it was about it's a, it was a it was a pilot project uh, starting from 2020 uh, uh, up to maybe. 2023 for MPhil and then for PhD it was continuing. So I think in a nutshell, that's me. Uh, maybe <laughs> I'm also a, I'm a past uh, journalist, uh, having worked uh, uh, in Zimbabwe a Broadcasting Corporation and also at the Chronic Visa Zimbabwe's uh, 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 by large uh, big media institution. So I think in a nutshell, that's my, that's my bio. <laughs> it's great to talk to a journalist in Zimbabwe. I've never talked to a journalist in Zimbabwe before, but I'm also a journalist as well. So that's why I find it really cool. So what motivated you to write this research article for our blog? It's a great article, I, as I already mentioned, but what motivated you to write this? I think uh, what motivated me to write uh, this article is that uh, if you look at uh, literature, academic literature, most uh, studies, they have been originating from the global north, from the Western countries, developed uh, countries. They have been Eurocentric uh, in their approach, you know, especially in terms of their research paradigms, their methodology, their approach even to to science communication. Uh, hence, uh, this 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 uh, ignited a question. It unraveled um, a passion to understand uh, the, the nexus that if a, a Western countries or if a western researcher is doing research and using eurocentric method situated in their locality how do they fit in developing countries in the global south we are in the usa mm. as, as, as a journalist uh, do are your skills are your tools uh, uh, or your approach in doing your work relevant to africa are they relevant to developing countries such as Zimbabwe, do they speak the language of Africans? Do they speak the language of Zimbabweans, the sub-altered, altered, you know? So I think th 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 that's one of my key motivations. That's what uh, motivated me to write this, uh, this article. Uh, we say knowledge is fluid. Every society uh, has knowledge. But uh, unfortunately, we've noticed that uh, uh, knowledge system is, has been imbalanced. There's been imbalanced flow of Knowledge, you see, knowledge has always been originating from the West. I'm not saying it's bad, but that's what it has been. It has been originating from the West uh, to us, uh, the South. So now, I'm, I'm now, my, my question is that: uh, Are we people in the South not able to generate knowledge? Can we generate theories? Can we generate uh, new methodologies, new paradigms? You see. So I think that, 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 that those are the questions that I continue to engage with. Those are the questions that I continue. Uh, 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 to approach in my research. In your article, you mentioned that if we as science communicators are to help unpack indigenous knowledge systems and ways of learning, we must rethink the way we communicate science. And this is something I talk about a lot at Fancy Comma, but you're not in the context of the global south, but just in the context of including everyone. How important is the social and environmental context in promoting science communication? 
first and, for, and foremost, uh, if you have to, do, if our science communication to be to be effective, it must be contextual. So it must be contextual. So that's the issue of social aspect. You know, in communicating science, we have to take into consideration context. Context. Who are we communicating to? That's the first question that we, we as uh, academics, we as researchers, fail. You know, uh, as, as I speak today, I, I was uh, uh, facilitating on a workshop right now on academic as ivory towers, whereby the communities, uh, uh, the rural communities uh, in, in, in the villages, uh, they are saying, no, but uh, these universities, there are universities in our place, but not universities of ourselves. I don't know whether you get me. There are universities located in our place, but not universities of ourselves. Meaning that how we conduct uh, our research, you see, how we conduct science communication, you see, uh, is devoid of their input. You see, we, we are writing for our own. We are, for example, as academics, we, we write journals, you know, I publish journals uh, in peer reviewed uh, we, we, we publish our work in, in journals, huh? And they appear reviewed by our colleagues. Uh, and, and that knowledge, you find that it only serves our own purpose. It's for our own purpose, for our own dissemination. But does it uh, really reflect on what is happening in the ground, in the societies? Does it take the input of an ordinary person in the street, for example, in Africa? Does it take that input of that ordinary person? If you have to talk about science communication, what is science? That's the, so what is science? What is science communication in the context of developing countries? Is that, does science communication include the spiritual aspect? You see, because in, in, the, in communication in fraternity, there are issues of spirituality. For example, if we are to look at uh, Africa, in African context, you know, there is the issue of spirituality. There is the issue of culture. You see, so in science communication, uh, does it include culture? Does it speak on issues of culture? Then the issue of vehicle of communication. We are using, what, what language are we using as a vehicle of communication? Are we using English? And in using English, are we able, or uh, can we express ourselves in using uh, uh, English? You see, so these are some of these, uh, these are some of these issues that we as science communicators must be alive on. You see, then the, the other issue that I, I, I'm looking at is, where are we publishing the research? The media. Yes, we can say we are publishing the research in journals. We are, we are now publishing them or we are sharing with the media. They are coming news articles. We are publishing them in the, in the internet, like here in, the, in this blog. But who is reading this blog? That's, that's the question. Who is reading this blog? Yes, I have written this work. But people who are reading this blog, are they the target market? Does it reach the target market? So those are some of the questions that we need to rethink even how we communicate as researchers, as science uh, co communicators, you see, in terms of our approach uh, to either research or how we communicate. Because in the instance, we end up losing uh, both the message and the receiver, you see, because of the way we are wired. So that's why, in my understanding, I'm saying there is a way to integrate even issues of indigenous African knowledge system when communicating science to African audiences. If you want to get a message to someone, you have to actually create the message for them. And I speak English because I, I live in the U.S., but other places they speak different languages, sometimes many different languages in one single place. So if you don't have the science communication in those languages, you're effectively just not reaching those people. So and that goes for policy, it goes for science. So my next question is, what do you suggest to policymakers and science communicators in integrating indigenous knowledge systems based on the findings of your study, or I guess of our blog, or just in general? Uh, in terms of uh, research, especially in terms of indigenous uh, knowledge systems, uh, what, what I will say, in, in how we communicate in journalism, we usually use the cardinal five W's and H, who, what, where, when, why, and how. And uh, stories are often told in, not in tandem with indigenous communication practices. You see, you find that in, in our African storytellers and I always tell our stories, the garments does not come in the first, but when we write our stories, we want the garments to be contained in the first 40 to 50 way. You see, so it is easy to leave out people because people, they are used to getting the juicy part of aspect or the important aspect at the end of the story. You see, so th those are some of the issues that I, I, I highlighted in dealing with the journalism you see, in African context. You see, how do we package our story to be celebrated, you see, to Africans? Then, for example, the other, the, 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 the other issue, in terms of science communication, who are our experts? That's another issue. Who are our experts? You know, who are, find that most of experts, for example, in, during uh, 
coronavirus pandemic, most experts, they were drawn from Western world. You know, these were, these were drawn from Western world. But how does an African like uh, me in Zimbabwe believe that uh, expert who is coming from USA? For example, maybe I may have a conspiracy theory that is circulating. You know, there are some misinformation that are already circulating within. So if we are to use experts, we must use locally experts who know, who, who, have been, who are part of, of, of the people, who are part of the audiences. I think that's the first approach that, that, that I think we need. Let's use local experts. Let's avoid the issue of using other experts. If we are to deal with issues of, of, of African in nature or developing world, let's use experts that are readily available. Then the other issue, I think, let's channel resources towards capacitating um, the local experts in these local universities. Yes, we can do research at our big universities, Ivy League, but if there is a possibility, if there is a possibility, let there be collaboration. Let there be collaboration between these big universities and these small universities in Africa, in the global south, that are developing. And for also, in our work as a journalist, you, you need to have a collaboration. If you are going to do a story, in Africa, on in, or, or on, commun on on communication or on indigenous issues, let there be collaboration. Let 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 let's, let's turn away or let's get away with this issue of a fixer, whereby someone is just coming there as an assistant. But let there be collaboration so that there is a co-creation of knowledge from both ends. So I think if we, if we work on that, we are able uh, then to convey the message. So what are your, are you doing research right now? What are your future research directions? My, my future career is they are still located within the, uh, the indigenous African knowledge system next us with the uh, media. You see. So those are uh, my, 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 my future research. Currently, uh, I, I was looking at issues or two with the uh, media literacy of the same people. Or the same, if you know the same, uh, in, in, in brief, I say, uh, media literacy people of indigenous communities. You see, I was looking at that because I find that uh, uh, media literacy is now a necessary skill in the enjoyment of uh, digital human rights. But there's this group of people, the indigenous communities, such as aboriginals, the same in the community, they are left out. So my research now is currently focused on those kind of people see, in terms of do they have the necessary media literacy skills in order to live in this digital world. So that's where my research uh, interest or my research direction is taking. That's a very great importance in Africa because as I was talking to you, under the microscope, they're a Kenyan science communication group and they're constantly having so many digital connectivity, internet problems, power problems that they do a lot of their science communication actually in person without the internet. So do you have any closing thoughts that you would like to share with us? Science communication can be an important vehicle in deconstructing and moving past the negative stains that permit indigenous knowledge system. There is more that the world can gain and learn enhancing the power and efficacy of indigenous knowledge system in developing countries. For example, in disciplines such as medicine, environmental management, you see, scientific knowledge must not be shouted in second. It's known by a select few people who attend universities. But it must be easily shared and be understood even by the poor of the poorest, you see. Practitioners of science communication must not fall into the binaries of uh, polarization, uh, uh, viewing the world using uh, uh, a single line of thought, you know. What uh, Shifamada was a teacher, I think the Nigerian author, I think, a way of, uh, of a single way of viewing the world, you know. So we must move away from that, especially as communicators, and try uh, to harness even wider, uh, broad varieties of knowledge, such as indigenous knowledge system. Is this something you recommend for people in the U.S. or specifically for people in Africa? And you do actually give some recommendations um, on the blog, like specifically how to use African storytelling techniques. Do you have any suggestions for people, uh, may maybe not even just in global South nations, but in general to make science communication more inclusive of these different viewpoints? Like what, what are any advice for our viewers, I guess? My viewers, viewers I think the first thing is to, is to get brought in terms of our reading. Let's start reading work uh, from other scholars, particularly scholars from the developing world. I think we can start by reading uh, the work of some people such as uh, 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 Professor Sabelo Kacheni Jovu. I think he, the work of uh, uh, Dr. Lastimoyo. I think they talk a lot in terms of uh, 
this up. I'll change. I'll change. They talk a lot in terms of decoloniality. Let's start uh, waving such kind of discussions. You know, let's start having such kind of uh, uh, conversations. You see, start reading the works of other scholars within developing countries, so that we widen our scope. You see, so that we are able to understand the world. You see, as opposed to just confining ourselves to uh, uh, to, to to the work of the of uh, uh, academics based in the West. Yes, sometimes uh, the journals uh, from developing countries. They may they, they may rank low in terms of in terms of ranking in terms of metric, but they can give you a hint. They can widen your, your scope. You have to read them so that you are able to get what Africans are researching about. You know, despite the fact that some sometimes they may rank low. You see, so just let's read and widen our scope. From there, we are able to then to create a, a quality conversation. Because remember, this issue of of indigenous knowledge system of using uh, the science uh, communication as an event to create other alternative of knowledge. It's an ongoing process. It, 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 it is not an event. It's an ongoing process. As we rediscover and relearn, you see, it's an ongoing process. There is need to look at in the work of other uh, scholars as well. I love that and I love your perspective and I'm glad we were able to chat today. We've been trying to schedule this unsuccessfully for quite some time because the hour time difference is like 12 hours or or some significant <laughs> yeah. number of hours so yeah. i really appreciate your time today mr moyo thank you and um we hope that you'll write for us again and contribute more of these insights they're thank you they're very valuable to our reader viewers thank you very much hope the viewers will enjoy the conversation thank you very much uh viewers uh i hope uh, maybe for my apology we're outside we're in the field as Africans, <laughs> we're not in our room. I'm just outside. I'm in a field, you know, uh, doing research. It's it's a nice background. It's a great background. Anyway, thank you for your time <laughs> today. We really appreciate it.